Tony and Dragon's Treasure Tony lived in a village in the south of Poland near a city named Krakow. Tony's favorite part of the day was dinner time because, at dinner time, the whole family would sit around the television and watch the news. No school lesson could compare to the stories Tony watched on the news. It was one such story that changed Tony's life forever. One evening, just before the harvest, the family was sitting, enjoying steaming bowls of chicken soup with homemade macaroni when the news began. The top story was about a mysterious robbery from Wall Castle in the city of Krakow. During the night, thieves had snuck in and taken the treasure from Smok's lair. Everybody in Poland knows the story of Smok, the dragon who lived in Wawel Castle many hundreds of years ago. Smok lived in the caves beneath the castle and used to eat the king's cattle. The king offered his daughter's hand in marriage to the man who could slay the mighty dragon. Many brave knights and noblemen tried and failed, but in the end, it was a simple cobbler who had slain the mighty dragon. As every schoolgirl and boy knows, dragons sleep on a bed of gold treasure. Smok's lair had such a bed of gold, and when the dragon was slain, the king did not move the gold because he wanted other dragons to think that Smok still lived in Wall Castle. That way, the king had exclaimed, I will never be bothered by dragons again. And so the gold coins stayed in the dragon's lair for hundreds of years, each new king believing that the gold brought good luck to his people. The gold coins had stayed in the lair for all of that time until they were stolen, and it was while eating his dinner in front of the television that Tony first learned of the robbery. The reporter was interviewing a tall policeman at Wall Castle. The policeman said, we believe that the thieves came into the castle during the day pretending to be tourists. They must have hidden in a dark corner of Smock's lair and waited until the castle closed for the day. They then filled two large suitcases with as much gold as they could. This, he said, while pointing to a spot on the castle floor, is all that remains of the precious gold coins. Tony's father gasped, all that treasure gone. What if another dragon comes along and sees that all the gold is missing, asked Tony. They will know that Smock isn't there anymore. The castle might be attacked and we would have a new dragon after all these years. Daisy, Tony's older sister, chuckled to herself and said, well then, the king must go to the bank and get some more gold coins before it is too late. The family laughed and returned to eating their delicious chicken soup. It seemed to Tony that nobody believed in dragons anymore, so maybe there was nothing to worry about after all. The next day, Tony's parents and siblings were all going out to the fields to bring in the harvest. They would be gone for the whole day. Every harvest, different members of the family would take it in turn to stay at home, cook the food, look after the farm animals, and prepare the barn to store the crops. This year it was Tony's turn. As his family left in the tractor, Tony gathered the food scraps for the farm animals and headed for the stables to feed the horses their hay. Then he milked the cows and walked them out to the field to graze. The next job was to clean out the barn. Tony opened the large doors and went inside. Once inside, he noticed a strange, golden light shimmering from the shadows towards the back of the barn. I wonder what that could be, he thought and went to investigate. As he approached the shimmering light, he could not believe what he saw on the floor of the barn. Gold! A suitcase split open and it was full of gold. And besides that, there was another case still closed. Tony was amazed. 
he was sure that this was the gold from Smock's lair. The thieves must have been making their getaway and hidden the cases here so that the police would not find them, he thought. Tony knew what he must do. He ran back to the barn and gathered the gold coins together and zipped up the suitcase. Then he fetched the wheelbarrow from the stable and, after much heaving and puffing, managed to get both cases inside the wheelbarrow. The next part of his plan he was really not looking forward to. He was going to have to take the bus to Krakow and return the gold himself. It was a long journey but the young boy was determined to be brave and return the gold to Smoxler no matter what. After all, he reasoned, somebody has to save the castle from dragons. Tony took the jar containing his pocket money from under his bed, locked the front door to the farmhouse, and ran towards the barn to collect the wheelbarrow. Once he had gotten the hang of the wheelbarrow, which was very heavy indeed, he began on his journey toward the bus stop at the edge of the village. Tony had no idea when the next bus would be. He hoped he wouldn't have to wait too long as he was already starting to feel very nervous about the journey and whether or not the driver would let him on with his wheelbarrow. Then the bus came around the bend in the road and stopped right there in front of him. The doors opened and the driver stared at the young boy and then at the wheelbarrow. After some more heaving and puffing, Tony managed to push the wheelbarrow onto the bus and quickly found himself a seat at the back. As the bus drove out of the village, Tony concentrated on the cases in the wheelbarrow. He was afraid to look out of the window because he didn't like the thought of leaving the village and traveling all by himself. Tony knew everybody in the village, but in a big city like Krakow, he would not know a soul and might easily get lost. The bus traveled very slowly, stopping every few minutes to pick up more passengers. This will take forever, thought Tony. As they were traveling, the scenery had changed. It wasn't green or spacious. The open fields that he was used to had been replaced by tall, gray buildings where before there were herds of cattle, now all he could see were crowds of people walking on massive stretches of pavement. Tony felt overwhelmed. Where could all these people possibly have come from, he wondered. Suddenly, the bus came to a halt and the driver shouted back to Tony that this was his stop. Wallow Castle. Finally, he had arrived. Tony pushed the wheelbarrow up to the guards who were standing on either side of the giant gates. Beyond the gates, Tony could see the imposing castle. It was very big and even a bit scary. Going on holiday, asked one of the guards with a wry smile. No, said Tony. I have something that belongs to the castle and I am here to return it so that you don't get any more dragons. The guards looked down at the suitcases, then back at Tony. Just as they were about to tell Tony to run along, the curator appeared at the gates. Tony recognized him immediately from the news. The young boy seized his chance and opened one of the suitcases and took out a single gold coin. He held the coin up to the curator triumphantly and said, I believe this belongs to you. The curator was overjoyed. He could not believe his ears when Tony told him how he had discovered the abandoned cases in his family's barn. Tony also told the curator how he had gotten the wheelbarrow and his pocket money, and how he had traveled on the bus all the way to Krakow which he had never done before. Quite a crowd had gathered to hear Tony's story and everybody was very impressed with the young boy. Then the guards picked up the suitcases and, together with Tony, they followed the curator through the castle to Smock's lair. 
Tony had never been inside or outside a real castle before. He looked on in wonder as he was led through huge rooms adorned with fancy silks and old paintings. Every room seemed bigger and fancier than the last. The convoy of people eventually reached the entrance to Smock's lair and carefully descended the steps. The deeper they went, the darker and colder it got, but still they went on until the narrow stairwell opened out into the lair itself. The guards opened the suitcases and Tony and the curator both grabbed big handfuls of the shiny gold coins and began throwing them across the floor in sheer delight. The curator was laughing out loud with a mixture of joy and relief. And Tony was laughing because he was so proud that he had succeeded in his mission to return the gold and keep the castle safe. No more dragons, he thought. Once all of the coins were back where they belonged, Tony started to say goodbye because he had a long journey ahead of him. But the curator was not about to let the young boy depart in such a manner. You really are the bravest boy in the whole city, said the curator. You should stay a while so that we might thank you properly. Tony wanted very much to stay, but he was thinking about his home and his family and the long bus journey ahead. He said, I would like to stay but I haven't prepared the barn for the harvest or the meal for the evening. My family will be wondering where I am and they will be angry that I have not done all of my chores. Don't you worry, said the curator. You have done a wonderful thing for the city. Now it is our turn to do something for you. Follow me. And with that, the curator led Tony up the dark stairwell and out across the main hall of the castle. Along the way, the old man issued instructions to the guards who then barked instructions into their radios. Suddenly the castle seemed to be alive with activity. By the time Tony and the curator reached the castle gates, there was a shiny black limousine and a very large truck awaiting their arrival. Castle guards, in their royal red and gold uniforms, were boarding the back of the truck carrying an array of large and small boxes. A very smartly dressed chauffeur opened the door to the limousine and tipped his hat as Tony got inside. The journey back to Tony's village was much quicker than his original bus journey into the city, and he didn't even have to spend any of his pocket money. In no time at all they had reached the village and were soon turning off of the main road towards Tony's home. As the limousine drove up the gravel path towards the house, Tony could see his family standing in the yard. They all looked very worried and very confused at the sight of the limousine and the truck and the guards in their red and gold uniforms. When the convoy stopped and Tony got out of the limousine, the whole family rushed towards him. All of them were speaking at once so that Tony found it difficult to understand them and more impossible still to answer their questions. Just as Tony was busy apologizing for not completing his chores, the curator stepped in and explained how Tony had returned the missing gold to the castle. A very brave boy you have here, said the curator as he introduced himself to the family. All of us at the castle are so very grateful. Tony's mother and father were beaming with pride by the time the curator had finished recounting their son's brave deeds. Then the curator said, I understand that there are a few things that still need doing around the farm. Please don't worry about a thing. And with that, he turned to the guards and nodded. The guards instantly divided themselves into three groups. The first ran to the barn and began clearing space for the harvested crops, while another group began unloading the crops from the trailer. The third group ran to the house and brought the family dining table out into the farmyard and laid the table with a fine cloth, plates, glasses, 
and fancy silver cutlery from the castle. Huge platters of delicious smelling foods were carried from the back of the truck and placed on the table. Tony's family seated themselves at the table and the curator proposed a toast in Tony's honor. They were surrounded by a guard of honor and Tony thought to himself, this is what it must be like to be royalty. The family laughed and ate together, and all the while Tony told them about the tall buildings in Krakow and the crowds of people and the castle and the limousine ride. It really had been an incredible day. And as Tony enjoyed the wonderful feast, he told himself that he was sure he would never forget this adventure.